Hey guys, it's Kia Marsh here from Marsh Management and Fast Start Digital. And today I'm on the online prosperity show, uh, speaking with you on how I got started selling and marketing online and how to keep your business up to date in ever changing digital marketing times. So stick around as I unpack how to get your business online and making money and growing fast. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the digital strategist himself, Kian. Kian, how are you doing, my man? Good, thanks, Prosper. How are you going? Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today on the show. I mean, obviously, if you're watching in the audience right now, you would have some sort of online presence. You would probably have a Facebook page, um, Instagram account, a Twitter account, some sort of Snapchat or you actually do have a Facebook page, even though they're no longer being visible in the timeline. So basically all of those things can be managed either by yourself or you can get the expertise of people that are dealing with, you know, a lot of, um, you know, digital marketing strategies out there. And that's the reason why I've brought in, um, you know, Kian, who is a marketing strategist that works from Canberra and he, has had a, a, a unique opportunity to work on several types of high level marketing campaigns. And he also specializes in digital marketing solutions. He's also helped a lot of business leaders to navigate through, you know, comprehensive and dynamic marketing solutions. So I brought him today so that he can actually help you um, bring your business to the next level. Now, Kian, you've already, you know, We've already explained a little bit about what you do. Um, maybe you can put the icing on the cake onto what exactly is it that, um, you know, you wake up every single day and do for your clients then. Yeah, sure. So like you were saying, I mainly focus as being a digital marketing strategist. So I mainly focus on getting clients in front of their potential customers and to have sort of touch points with all their potential customers or current leads to then convert them into customers. So as you were just saying before, Facebook uh, business pages, the organic reach has gone down dramatically, especially with the, the recent announcement. So I uh, come up with strategies for clients that I would imp that I implement for them in order to still get seen using paid advertising. And I mainly focus on Facebook ads as the targeting is very specific. You can target people in different stages of funnel and people that are most likely to be interested in your business. Absolutely. So let's just say I've just started my own business right now. What would actually make me want to consult with a digital marketing strategist if I can create my own website, if I can create my own Facebook page, and if I can tweet on my own? Yes, yeah, good point, Prosper. Um, well, a digital marketing strategist um, spends a lot of time, invests a lot of time in researching what is going on in the digital space, like I was saying, with the Facebook algorithms, and as well as staying up to the minute by um, their contacts and attending courses. So they're just really to stay up to the minute and as well having a strategy behind it. Some people are going on their pages, they might have posted once in 2014 and they did post for another six months or something like that. So if you come across their Facebook page, it nearly looks like their business is closed. It's like there's just nothing at all. So often that is also because business owners, they spend so much time in their business, working on their business. So they don't have the time to, to be on top of their Facebook and they definitely don't have enough time to invest in researching and, and knowing what plugins they need on their website, what Facebook is doing. And as yeah, they need to have a, a strategy, a posting strategy and a posting schedule. Absolutely. That's a very valid point. But then you will still have people that, um, you know, maybe small to medium scale businesses um, that still don't see the value in sort of online or digital marketing. Do you think that digital marketing will completely replace traditional marketing practices in the near future? I think so. I mean, it, it really already is. There's less, there's becoming more, it's becoming a lot more competitive in the online space to show your ads to customers because it can be so targeted with say a billboard or a TV commercial. It's just who's ever watching or walking past at the time. It's not really highly targeted to reach those customers and you can't turn it on and off and test it. Like once it's, 
it's done. Like there's not too much you can do. So more and more businesses now are knowing that they have to get online and often you'll see they, they throw up a website once they've registered the business name and everything, but they don't really go back and revise it and come up with a strategy. Like you'll even see down the bottom of their page or say copyright 2012 or something like they haven't done anything with it. Um, yes. So I, yes, it's definitely digital marketing is definitely on the rise and, and traditional forms of advertising are really becoming less and less effective every day. Absolutely. Well, it's always been like this. Maybe somebody would argue that I use word of mouth to reach my audience and half of the people that I'm reaching out to don't even have a smartphone anyway. How would you maybe help a client who thinks that way regarding, you know, the, the future of their own marketing? So look at who your ideal customer is and look at your current customer base at the moment. So some of them, they might be slightly older and they may not um, necessarily be on the smartphone all the time or might not even own one. So for older people, say if they were, you could target ads just to show on desktop and for that particular age demographic. But um, also there's so many things you can do. You can also SMS marketing too. That's highly effective, especially um, as well as with Facebook's algorithm change, the Gmail algorithm change where heaps of emails went to the promotion folder, that really hurt a lot of marketers because their message weren't, wasn't getting through, but something hyper-targeted like an SMS campaign to your current clients. You just have to find a digital platform where your um, potential clients spend the most time and where it would resonate with them and where it makes sense. So maybe like a business-to-business -business service, you'd mainly focus on LinkedIn and as well as when people go on there, they're focused on the business side rather than just watching cat videos or something on Facebook. It's just about being targeted. Absolutely. So when we first started our website, um, you know, there was a lot of people coming to it and we we're getting a lot of, um, you know, traffic. Now it seems to be going less and less and less. What strategies would you give me to maybe most effectively increase the traffic back to the website? Yep. So link everything back to your website. If you're putting out content, if you're, if that's part of your marketing strategy to say to have a weekly podcast or um, a blog, what I would then do is use social as well to drive traffic to the website. So say if you've just done a, a podcast, you could do a really good quote from that either with a, with an image or a video. Um, Video is the, has the highest organic reach on Facebook. So I have done little just short segments of it, of video of the podcast, and then say, for more, visit my website. Um, and that's one way of driving traffic there and getting them to there. But, yeah, linking everything back. So I guess a lot of people say, think of your website as like the solar system, sort of everything revolves around it and you want everything going back into your website. So, yeah, just having a content strategy. Um, that all goes back to your website is, is one way. And then obviously from there, you want to look at remarketing campaigns. If people have looked at say the contact page on your website or looked at a particular service and some, especially a content page, that contact page that shows like a high intent, like someone is very, that would be a, a warm, a warm lead. So you definitely want remarketing on your, on your contact page. Absolutely. So, in the last couple of weeks, I think we placed $20, say 25 on a Facebook ad and we got nothing. So I don't think Facebook ads work. What would you, what would you do in order to replenish that, you know, customer who's, who feels like that? Yeah. So that was one of the first people that I, I started working with was a, a wedding styling business. So they, they would do that. What they would do is they would just boost posts. So Facebook, it used to be sort of spontaneous, but every, pretty much every single time a bit, <laughs> I could see. Yes, exactly. So they, yes, they would just hit boost on and send us a 10, $20, but it's not really targeted at all at all. Facebook wants to make as much money out of you as possible. So they'll just give you a really loose audience, especially if you're linking back to say you have a post and then a link to it, the cost per click is going to be significantly higher on posts like that because they don't resonate with the audience. Facebook have to show that 
same ad two, 3,000 times in order to get one click. So, yeah, sometimes it's just based on people that have been on your page. So I said to them that, you, yeah, you definitely need to be more targeted. Being hyper-targeted would be using your, installing a Facebook Pixel, which, I, which is that initially what I did for them, and then retargeting people that are based on their website, on social, rather than just literally random people. And because it's a wedding business, it's even kind of easier because pretty much most women that are like 18 or over that are in the relationship as like they've changed their relationship status to engage that's in that area would be a potential, potential um, customer for them. But they, yeah, no targeting at all. So was anyone was targeting anyone really single married in a relationship divorce, like literally like it was anyone. So yes. So definitely if you were just hitting boost every time, you'd be getting content out there that might help one or two potential people that would be interested to see it. But yeah, definitely that's not, not an effective strategy just to hit boost. Even though Facebook tells you, I've had people get emails from Facebook saying, Oh, boost this post to get more. And they'll, they'll ask me, should I do it? No, like that's, it's not going to get you a result really at all. And it discourages people too. They think, Oh, if Facebook ads don't work. Like I've done this. And I was like, well, that's, yeah, that's not really what it's all about. Absolutely. So you did mention a bit about re, um, you know, retargeting or remarketing to those people. Well, what if these people already know who we are and they've already seen the ad, they've clicked it. Why should we keep sending ads to them? Yeah, so it's good to um, have a sort of a funnel process. So if they've, they've opted in for a form, then you want to get them to the next stage in the funnel, which depending on the business might be, say, well, there's a lot of coaching businesses, a lot of consulting businesses, it would be a, a free strategy call. So you just want to move them down the funnel. So, um, yeah, on all your landing pages and everything have tracking, but be hyper-targeted to where they are in the funnel. And especially you see it a lot with e-commerce sites, like you add, add a pair of jeans, say, to your cart, and then for whatever reason, you you don't end up buying it and then you're going to be seeing ads. But I mean, there's a fine line between seeing ads and annoying people. You want to make sure that the ad window is only a couple of days um, and sort of change, yeah, change it up a bit as well. And um, a discussion with, with landing pages too often, uh, especially if you're investing in Google AdWords, some people you'll click on it and it'll take them straight to the homepage. So if you're looking for something very, very specific, which might be on their website hidden somewhere, but if you're just taking them straight to your home page, like it's not effective at all because you're not capturing their information, you're sending, you're not giving them the information that you want that they want. And so yeah, so that's another another way that I typically see people wasting money. Absolutely. So I mean all of these things, there's so many bits and pieces to, you know, um track and follow through and stuff like that. How do you personally stay updated with, you know, latest digital marketing trends or what's actually working and how would we know that your strategies are going to be something that would yield sort of some sort of result for us? Yep. So like we're saying, digital marketing, you really have to be up to the minute. Facebook changes their newsfeed algorithm about every three weeks. It might just be a minor tweet, but you do need to especially be on top of the, the major ones. So regularly I'll attend training courses on specific areas, whether that's creating a Facebook bot or um, Google Analytics and just different things that really focuses down on that. And it's, it's up to the, it's really up to the minute. Like sometimes um, some of the, the trainers have said, like, well, I just changed this last night. Like something might come up really quickly and really just, testing as well i would spend invest a fair amount of time in in split testing different audiences and different ad objectives too like it's i can see people can get really easily overwhelmed when they have so many different options whether it's clicks to the website engagement offer ads so yeah so basically i've been invest a lot of time in that and people if they are going to do that do that themselves they should really invest a lot of time in learning about how the platform works and what and testing different things before investing capital in that. Right. So in the last maybe five years, our page was gathering a lot of likes, 
and we were getting a lot of engagement, but now all of that has sort of gone down. Um, is it is it important for us to continuously get people to like our page so that you know a lot more people can view our content? What is more important, engagement or just having many people uh, liking my page or content? Yeah, um, so definitely engagement. You want people engaging with your content. Um, I mean, and you can run ads, paid ads that has the like button next to it, um, which some people do just to sort of build up their following. The only th there is a benefit to that, which is people. If you if you've done that, you can remarket to people that like your page, and it will be slightly cheaper. So you could spend a bit more up front. Sometimes it can be sort of up to four or five dollars per like. But once you've done that and they've liked your page, you can forever sort of target them. Um, but definitely you want people engaging with your posts. Like there's some businesses that get a huge amount of engagement on their posts, but they might not have a, a huge amount of likes on their page. But um, yeah, and it's, it's just sharing relevant content too. People aren't going to engage with it if it's not relevant to them or it's not really relevant to their, to their business. Like I looked at some people's pages and it's sort of just all – sort of cat memes or, and then maybe it'd be one post about their business, but you can kind of, yes, exactly. So yes, but you can kind of tell when people aren't really, um, they just post something, a sales, kind of like sales pitch and then be cat memes, cat memes, cat memes. So that means they don't really have a, st a strategy at all. So you need to have a strategy in order to get the engagement and then retain it, especially with all the algorithm changes as well. Absolutely, Kian. Now, obviously, somebody might be sitting at the edge of their seats. The way, you know, we designed this show today was speaking from the point of view of the audience, you know, that would have had those sort of questions uh, and nobody was there to answer them. So thank you so much for that. Now, could you also just let us know how people can get a hold of you just in case, you know, people have further questions that I did not uh, touch upon in this um, video today? Yeah, definitely. More than happy to help everyone, anyone out. Um, so you just go to my, my website, marshmgmt.com.au and you can submit a form and just ask me a question as well as I do um, free audits on your current social media, di or digital marketing and your website and we'll give you an idea of, of what it is at the moment and where we can take it. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, you know, one last sort of question that I might um, ask pertaining to, you know, the future and the way things are going on. It's 2018 and already Facebook has already started declaring war on businesses and, you know, people are really left out of the water right now. They don't know how to proceed, whether to continue with those Facebook pages or to go on to yet other platforms and they're now afraid that they might build and then, you know, that, that whole thing might change. Do you have any sort of suggestions, um, you know, as to what people should do um, just so that the Facebook slap might not hit them uh, wherever else they go? How should they actually continuously create for and relate to their audiences? Yeah. So like I said, yeah, posting relevant content and as well as having, um, having a strategy of people who were like a couple of years ago, you could easily get 25 to maybe 40% organic reach with your Facebook post. And now it can go down to as little as, as 2%. So you do it's Facebook has become a pay to play. So you do, if you want to get your content in front, you do have to invest originally sort of time to get everything aligned and then invest invest money in it. So, yeah, it, rather than just hitting, like I said, don't hit boost on the post, be hyper-targeted. If, if a post that you've done organically has got heaps of comments and likes and shares and then it is popular, you can use that post um, and, then, and then market. You can then sort of not boost it the Facebook way, but you can get that post and then put targeting on it. Who, who else that reaches this certain criteria, do you want to see this post? And once it's all organically got likes and comments and shares, it has social proof. If, if you see something in your newsfeed that, that looks like no one's seen it, it's kind of seems a bit sus and people, people got really short attention spans. You just have to capture them really quickly with your content. So sort of snappy content, 
Um, and Facebook Lives is where everything is sort of going. They're becoming more and more popular too. So Facebook like Live has the highest organic engagement out of any post type, and then it goes to to native video, to video that's been posted. Um, and as well as at the moment, you can it's for a while it was only available to certain business pages, but now you can use Facebook Stories as a business page, posting it via Instagram too. So that'll get for the moment, it seems uh, it'd be probably at least 60 or 70% organic reach that people would see that like your page. So Facebook, you usually take something away. So they'll take away the organic normal reach, but then they now have given you Facebook stories for your business page. So it's about utilizing the tools and what Facebook has given you. It's always constantly changing. So what might, so that might be all good now. And then a couple months time that reach will go down and then it'll become which is usable, but something else will come around. So it's all about staying up to date. Absolutely. Well, for their everyday business person, they still need to be doing what, you know, they started their business for in the first place, which is, you know, um, you know, creating remarkable products and services out there. So that's the reason why people like Kian will be there to touch on, um, you know, all these aspects that we, you know, just touched on right now, whether you're getting your business online for the first time or you really need, you know, a full blown um, integrated marketing strategy or campaign, you know, people like Kian are there to help you because if you're not doing it, your audience is getting that done for them by your competition and you don't want to be missing out, especially when you have already started to grow your business and people getting to know, like, and trust you. All right. So Kian, thank you so much, my man, for, you know, this very informative uh, segment, um, you know, of the online prosperity show. And um, I really, really wish you a wealthy year ahead, my man. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on the show, Ross. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, man.